Ginsburg. Good morning from San Diego. And we have a visitor today who will remain anonymous. Can we use your uh, first name or should we choose another name like Angelina? No, no, I'm not Angelina. No, Lindsay's fine. I'll All use right, my Lindsay name. Lindsay Fine. So we have Lindsay Fine is here with us today. And uh, I'm going to do some introduction, uh, Lindsay. This is, I've done this a lot. And uh, the reason I've done it a lot is kind of a little bit of a funny backstory. So um, I've been traveling the world for about the past 10 years after inventing the MGB 24 years ago this month in September, wow. 1997. So that's, a, that's insane. Yeah, well, <laughs> a lot of people have said that about me. So, <laughs> but anyways, about 10 years ago, I started traveling. So I'm blessed to have been all around the world. I've been in every continent uh, on earth, except for Antarctica. And uh, I've been with uh, enemies uh, different countries that are not friendly with each other. So I've been with uh, uh, Israel and all the countries in the Middle East. I've been wow. in Pakistan and India. And uh, so late last year, or let's see, early or end of 2019, I was getting ready to stop traveling because the MGB has kind of taken off. And I thought I would just start my practice again back in the United States. And I had it all arranged. And during credentialing, they said, you know, how many gallbladders did you do last year? And I said, none. And they said, well, how about gall gallstone? I mean, how about appendix? I got none. I said, just do the MGB. They said, well, you can't be credentialed as a general surgeon here unless you actually do general surgery. And I said, well, I don't do general surgery. I'm just MGB. So they said, well, you can't, according to our bylaws, you can't work here unless you're a general surgeon and you have to do at least a certain number of cases. So I called and I went to India to work with a friend for training there to train me on the things I've been doing for 40 years and uh, get credentialed. <laughs> and then the pandemic hit. Oh. So we went on lockdown and they said, not only are we on lockdown, but you can't be in the operating room because they told me I was old. <laughs> oh, <laughs> problem. So in addition to being old and being on the lockdown, I had nothing to do. And we were stuck in basically my friend, Dr. Kular in India, put me up basically and put up with me for a year. So I was stuck there for a year. And I started calling people online because I had some new research, research from my 3000 MGB patients who had filled out a survey and also information from people I talked with. And so now I have a way of doing this. This is a free online consultation, doesn't cost you anything. And I'm not gonna be asking you to join my multi-level marketing scheme at the end, but uh, I think that I can help. And we kind of okay. talked for a minute on the phone and you have a lot of complex issues in your background, but the main thing, and you correct me if I'm wrong, is you gained weight since your MGB and with a lot of other issues, but that's kind of the reason for the phone call. Is that right? That is right. Okay. And I think I can fix it. Well, of course, all men think that they know how to do it. There was one comedy show I saw and there was two people talking and the one guy said, I'm going out of town tomorrow. And the one other guy says, I know a shortcut. The guy said, but I haven't told you where I'm going. He says, that's okay. I know a shortcut. He <laughs> says, well, I don't even know where I'm going. He says, well, I, that's okay. I know a shortcut. So men are kind of like that. So when you did your phone call to me. I said, oh, I know what to do, even though you hadn't told me anything. So I apologize. I'm a guy. So I'm, uh, I'm all over it. <laughs> but I have talked to now going on 400 people since the past year being stuck in the pandemic. And I have some specific things that I want to do during this talk, and it usually takes an hour. And you will need to have a pencil and paper because they're going to go through a lot of stuff. So have you got a pencil and paper? I do. Good. And uh, it's going to be complicated. There's a lot to go through. And so again, I need to apologize for a male failing, which is I'm going to frequently cut you off. And I'm begging you for your forgiveness now because I don't think it's because I'm a bad person, although I've heard other opinions on that factor, <laughs> but uh, I wanna get through roughly 50 questions and then a couple of 20 to 30 minute lectures on physiology of the gut, why we're gonna be asking you to do the things we're gonna ask you to do and why it should help. And if you give me good long answers to things, details on this and that, like some of the tragedies you've already described that you're going through, then we won't be able to finish in time. Okay. Oh, okay. well, let's see. Somebody is here and wants to come in. So we'll say admit. Okay. 
Um, all right. So welcome, welcome, Allison. Okay. Um, so we have a lot to go through. So I'm going to interfere with your presentation frequently because you're going to want to give me a detailed and accurate answer if you're like most patients. And I don't want that. I got 50 questions to go through and I got to give you two lectures. Hang on, let me mute this. Okay, Allison. Okay, good. And another person wants to get admitted, so that's good. Um, so because of what I have to do, I'm going to be particularly acting like a guy, interrupt you, tell you I don't care, I just want a short answer, things like that. So can you find it in your heart to forgive me with you that? Already for it's all good. Okay, all right. But the goal is I want to help, and I think I know how to help. And if you're like most patients, you're going to want to give me a careful and thoughtful explanation for a lot of stuff I don't need detail on. Okay. Okay. All right. In addition, this kind of one hour, which is all the Zoom people allow you on the free version, is not enough time to go through all the details. I'll get you started. I think you'll be happy with the suggestions and the justifications for what we're doing, but it can be difficult. So we're going to ask you to realize you might need more than just this hour. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay, ready, set? Ready, set, go. All right, you're how old? 44. Okay, and you had an MGB 12 years ago? Yes. And at the time of your first surgery, you weighed how much? 350 pounds. Okay, and today you weigh roughly how much? 245. So you're down 100 pounds? Yes. Okay, which is bad because you were better and you've been through some major tragedies, which we might or might not get into, but you're down 100 pounds. And the reason for our phone call today is you're having nausea plus you gained a bunch of weight back. Yes. That's roughly correct. Yes. So the two things, if we could knock out two things, usually I only go for one, but if we could knock out the nausea and help you with weight loss, then I would be a good guy. You would be the light of my life. Don't say that to doctors and men. It goes right to their head. They wander around thinking that they're the light of the, everybody's life all the time. So <laughs> you shouldn't lead into that. It just makes things worse. They're, they're more difficult <laughs> to deal with. All right, good. Well, thank you. That's really nice because I hope that we will help. Amazing. Okay, so <clears throat> right this now, right this moment, what illnesses are you suffering from that you could summarize quickly? What are the, the illnesses? If, if you went to see a doctor, you would say like you had a broken back and can you list quickly the things that you have wrong with you? And maybe begin with like how many things are wrong with you between one and 10 or a hundred or how many things are wrong with you illness wise? Um, three. I like it. When we started, I thought I was going to get a hundred. Okay, the no. three big things or the three things going on with you are what? Chronic nauseousness, mm -hmm. um, reflux, ah. chronic diarrhea. Oh, we got this, baby doll. That is so good. And uh, right. actually, now, wait four. A minute, for our swollen legs, list, for swollen our legs and feet. I'm sorry? And swollen legs and feet. I got it. I got all of them. Okay. okay. If you were nauseated and couldn't eat and having diarrhea, shouldn't you think if you just, somebody told you that, shouldn't you lose weight? You would think. Yeah, but you're not. No. Okay. I, I know it already. I'm hanging up. I'm done. I'm good. <laughs> now you have to give me the secret. Oh, right. Okay. That's good. <laughs> It's not just for me to know. I have to communicate back to you. Okay. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm, this is again, a guy thing. You have only told me two things and I think I know the answer. You know, I'm Sherlock Holmes, you know, no. Uh, okay. I need to ask you about 50 questions and I sure. think, I think I know where we're going, but I we'll, we'll go back to this and I should write it down on a piece of paper and I'll show it to you later that I know what's wrong okay. and what to do. But um, Okay. What pills are you taking now? How many different medicines are you taking? About five. Okay. Can you name them for me easily? Five. Well, are we talking, are we, are we including like vitamins and minerals in that or just prescription meds? 
vitamins. Ah. Okay, we're gonna do both separately. Stop taking all the vitamins and minerals, number one. Who told you to take these vitamins and minerals? Hello? 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 I think I, my internet went down. Uh, I think I'm back. Can, oh. I, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. I wasn't sure whether I cut out or not. Okay. All right. So um, who told you to take about the my... vitamins and minerals? Pardon me? Who told you to take vitamins and minerals? You did. Okay. So you're doing what I told you? Not really, no. Okay. But I, some... I dropped right. off the, the vitamin and mineral train and I'm trying to pick it back up again. Okay. Well, don't. Okay, so let's, okay. let's don't tell me what you think or anything like that. Right now, what vitamins and minerals are you taking? Quickly, please. I am taking vitamin D. Stop it. I, okay. Magnesium. Stop it. And, um, oh crap, what's it called for my nails? Stop um, it, stop it, stop okay. it, stop it. Okay, anything else? Nope. Okay. A, a sleeping pill and an antidepressant. Okay. Do you, do you know the names offhand? Uh, Zopaclone. Okay. Zopaclone to sleep. Uh-huh. And um, I'll get you the name. And... Look, we can't waste this kind of time because we're low, not going to be able to get down. Huh? Low paramide. Low paramide. Low paramide for, for diarrhea. Oh, then I don't know what I'm taking. Okay, well, so that handicaps oh, us a little bit. No, it's okay. It's lat s sit to lap e s c i t a l o p r a m. It's a lot of pram. Yeah, yeah, that's a, yeah, that, that's a, yes. Okay, okay, I would get to your doctors on all those and ask if you could withdraw from them over time. And we'll talk about that another time, but those are all screwing you up. And the iopyramide, some guy gave you for your diarrhea, right? Yeah, I'm not taking it, it doesn't work. Okay, well, all right. Uh, okay, well, anyways, well, okay, good, good, good. All right, any other medicines you're taking? No. Nope. Okay, and you can't sleep, you're taking a sleeping pill? Yeah. Okay. So when did you start taking that? 10 years ago, after a sleep study. They were diagnosed by a sleep doctor. They gave you a sleeping pill after a sleep study? Yeah. Okay, something's wrong about that. So do you have a doctor now that you could talk to and get you off the sleeping pill? I do, and in fact, I am having another sleep study done tonight. You know, the sleep study doesn't make any difference as far as a sleeping pill. The sleeping pill doesn't help with sleep studies and the two don't go together. So something's wrong with what you're telling me, but okay. Put that okay. down that uh, something's going on there that we it's not, doesn't relate to what we're doing today, but we can't fix that today, but that's screwed up. Okay. Okay, what time do you normally go to bed? 11 o'clock. Okay, what time do you fall asleep? 11.30. Okay, and uh, what time do you normally wake up? About eight o'clock. Okay, and when do you eat the first time in the day after you wake up at eight o'clock? Uh, closer to 10. Okay, so that's wrong. That's really wrong. It's absolutely wrong and it's part of your problem. So we'll come back to that. Okay, at 10 o'clock, what do you normally eat or drink? Um, I usually have a wee bit of Tropicana orange juice and- wrong. Write down a wrong. little bit. No more orange juice. Okay. Um, some yogurt. No more yogurt. Some watermelon. Watermelon's okay. Now you have watermelon almost every morning at 10 o'clock? Yep. That's, That's my favorite. Okay. So it's the only thing that doesn't make me nauseous right now. All right. Okay. So 10 o'clock, you have watermelon. Yep. How long have you been doing that? Mm, about five or six months now. Okay. When did you start getting sick? Six months ago. So you started getting sick and you switched to watermelon. Yep. Because okay. it was the only so thing the that day you got sick. sick my the day you got sick, you switched to watermelon. I switched to watermelon three weeks after I got sick when they released me from the hospital. And you were in the hospital for? 
um, almost two weeks. For what reason? I ran a fever of 104 for almost 11 days. And right. Did they give you antibiotics a... when you were in the hospital? They did, yes. Okay. And before that, and you I... didn't have this before that you didn't have this problem. No. Okay, so write down on your paper S I B O. Okay. Okay. That's a bacterial overgrowth you get when somebody gives you antibiotics trying to help you and they end up hurting you. So okay. before they got hospitalized and with all that, you were doing kind of okay? Kind of okay. Yeah, I mean, I, had I didn't wait and I wasn't losing, but I, I was know, Short having... answers, short answers, short answers. Yeah. Okay. So before yeah. that, you were doing kind of okay. After you left the hospital, when you got antibiotics, things went to heck in a handbasket. Yep. I got it. I got it. We got it. Okay. SIBO stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. That means when you get antibiotics or other things, all of a sudden the gut bacteria gets messed up and then you can have diarrhea and illness and all kinds of things. And we hope we can fix that. Uh, it can be deadly. So we wanna pay attention, but I, if I had to guess, that's probably what we're dealing with. And your other doctors haven't picked up on it because it's a new thing. The other thing is write down this, it's called blind loop syndrome. Blind loop syndrome, okay. And the other thing is called afferent, A-F-F-E-R-E-N-T, afferent. A-F-F-E-R-E-N-T. -E syndrome, afferent loop syndrome, afferent loop syndrome. And so these are things you can Google after we're done and you'll find out more detail on this. But basically what has happened is you've damaged the, the gut bacteria that live inside you and that's punishing you and making you sick like this. And we might be able to get it better by giving you a healthy diet. And, uh, okay. and then also as thrown in the mix is you lose weight because a lot of your weight now is this fluid that's in your legs and stuff like that. And you can get sicker over time. And so I stopped for a second. Have you been getting sicker since this uh, event gets uh, happened to you? Yes. So things are not going stable. They're actually, you're getting worse. Yes. Okay. You can get so sick from this. The diarrhea also is going along with SIBO and blind loop syndrome and et cetera. You can get so, so sick from this. You can actually die from it. So I don't mean to be scary, but you're right to call about it. And uh, I would say with the ego of a guy, I think you may have one of the right doctors to figure this out because not, not many people understand it or are, are confused about it. So we're going to work on that. Okay. Okay. So you were percolating along, you get whatever it was that put you in the hospital during the hospitalization. You look so sick. They gave you a course of high dose, strong antibiotics. And when you came out, you've had diarrhea, nausea, progressive weight gain, but it's kind of a funny weight gain because it's, you're not eating that much. So you, how can we have weight gain when you're not eating? That would be right. Yeah. Okay. Well, it doesn't make any sense unless we tell you, you have an inflammation, your body is sick because it has the wrong bacteria growing inside you. Okay. And that happens in part because you're set up for higher risk because of your MGB. Your bypass means that the upper gut, the blind loop or the afferent loop doesn't get cleared out as much because it's bypassed. And so it becomes a home for bad bacteria to live. Okay. So one of the things you're going to have to write down is you're going to have to find a doctor who is uh, knowledgeable enough to understand what to do about blind loop syndrome. It includes an antibiotic sometime um, that are particularly good for these bad bacteria. So you, it's funny because you had it on, because you had an antibiotic, but there are antibiotics that might help. And so I'm going to have you write down flagyl. Flagyl, F-L. F-L-A-G-Y-L. F-L-A-G-Y-L. Or rifamaxin. R-I-F-O-M-I-X-O-N. Rifamaxin. Sorry, R I F. M A X I N R I Y can I not spell today? R I F M A X I N. Okay. Yeah. Those antibiotics sometimes help with the bad bacteria and then eating a healthy diet that we're going to talk to you about. Like you have already moved to watermelon, you're trying to avoid eating the stuff that makes the bad bacteria worse. So you're close 
but you need to see a probably a GI specialist. Have you seen a GI specialist yet? Um, I have an appointment with one in two weeks. Okay, so when you go see him, you say, I talked to this knucklehead Rutledge. He says, I might have SIBO or blind loop syndrome or afferent loop syndrome. And you have, you're gonna to have to write this down, a Bill Roth II, B-I-L-L-R-O-T-H, Bill Roth II gastric bypass. Okay. And that means you have a blind loop. And so you can get a bacterial overgrowth. Now, have you ever been given an antiacid? Yes. Like Prilosec or anything like that? Yep. Okay, that sets you up to be more likely to get an overgrowth of bad bacteria. Yeah, the I won't take them. We don't work. I'm sorry? I wouldn't take them, they didn't work. Okay, well, I don't care, but here's the thing. When you took them, they decrease the acid in your stomach and that allows the bad bacteria to grow. The acid in your stomach is part of our protective nature because we eat bacteria all the time. But when they get in our stomach, the bile, the acid and the enzymes kill them. When you take the PPIs, the proton pump inhibitors like Prilosec, when you took them, that allows the bad bacteria to get even worse. Okay. So that time when you took it, whatever length of time also contributed to your illness, but that's okay, you're not taking them now, right? No, I'm not. Okay, good. I'm pretty impressed with myself so far, what do you think? I think you're pretty impressive as well. <laughs> Don't say that. So, Dr. Rutledge, you're so fine. You fine. suck. <laughs> That's good. That's better. <laughs> that was a little harsh. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right. Okay. So now what can we do? All right. What can we do? Regardless of whether you have bacteria overgrowth, you can have either inside of us something called the microbiome. Have you heard of that? Yes. Okay. That's basically all the trillions and trillions of bacteria that live inside of us. And we can have good ones or bad ones. So what we want to do is recognize you have some particularly bad visitors and you might need help getting rid of them. But what we can do in the meantime is work to help the possibility of getting the good guys back in charge. Okay. Okay. All right. So here's the goal. Um, let's go over what you normally eat and we'll finish that up and then we'll come back and give you the what to do. So you normally don't eat breakfast. You wait till 10 and you have watermelon. What do you eat after that? Um, usually at lunchtime, I have, um, a boost. Okay. Wrong, wrong, wrong. You have to answer more quickly. I got a lot to go through here. Okay. Um, boost is poison. Okay. It grows bad bacteria. We don't want poison. Okay. So stop with okay. the boost. Okay. Nope. That doesn't grow healthy bacteria. It grows bad bacteria. We don't want bad bacteria. Boost doesn't grow healthy bacteria. Got it. Got it. No boost. Okay, when do you eat again after lunch? Or what else do you eat for lunch? No, that's that's lunch. And then water for the afternoon, sometimes some nuts, um, or a little what bit of kind cheese. Of nuts? Salted or non -salted? Um, No, unsalted almonds. Almonds and pistachios, cashews. Not it's really, really like that a good a choice. It's a little bit harder to digest them, so. Okay. That's not the ideal choice. It's not bad. A little bit of nuts is okay. So then what else? When, when do you eat again? You snack on these things during the day? Is that the deal? Yeah, because I'm, I'm busy massaging my massage. I know, I know. That's okay. That's okay. Um, All right. I don't other than why. that, water for All the right. afternoon. And then, you do, you, then you eat a snack in the afternoon? That, yeah, that the nuts and some cheese is my snack in the afternoon. Cheese, and it's yeah, just, cheese like, is out. Cheese grows no, bad bacteria. Stop. No that. cheese. Right. Okay. Now, when do you eat again? Then you have dinner. And then I have dinner. What do you have for dinner in the past six days? What have you had for dinner? Chicken soup. Okay. Chicken, bad. In chicken soup, soup, so it bad. doesn't have healthy in it. food. Good. Okay. So I understand what you're doing, but you're not helping us with chicken soup. Okay. Putting fat and grease and salt doesn't help. It grows bad bacteria, not healthy bacteria. Got it. You like yep. it because it goes down. We're going to come up with soup, but we'll get healthy soup. Okay. And then some jello when I go to bed. Okay, jello, poison. Okay, jello is pure sugar and gelatin. We don't want jello, okay? Okay. All right. And you don't have a snack at night around eight o'clock? No. Okay, potato chips? No. 
crackers? No. Cookies, junk food? No. Okay. And eating that little bit, you're still gaining weight? Yeah. How much have you gained during this time? I have gained 40 pounds in the past six months. Yeah, not the past six months. When did you get out of the hospital? Um, I got out of the hospital six, five, um, about five months ago. Okay. In the past five months. Five and a half months. Have, what? In, a, in a, about five and a half months ago. Okay. In the past five months, how much have you gained, do you think? 30 pounds. Yeah, that's more like it. Okay. That's 30 pounds of water and sickness. And uh, again, think about what you just told me you're eating. How can you gain weight when you eat that? You, in theory, shouldn't be able to. You should be losing. Not, a, not Yeah, it's not in theory. You can't gain that weight. If I hit your finger with a hammer, it would swell up and be heavier because it would yeah. have all that fluid in it. That fluid in your legs, that's the weight. Okay. Because you're sick. It's not because you're fat. You're sick. Okay. And it can get worse. So you're right to call me, but... Yeah, I think I know what it is and what to do, okay? Okay. All right. What does the good bacteria live on? Well, the good bacteria, the best bacteria for us, they eat fiber, okay? Fiber is wood, it's cellulose, it's in plants and fruits and things like that, right? Yep. Beans, oatmeal, stuff like that? Yep. It's not in jello, it's not in chicken noodle soup, it's not in yogurt. Right. Okay. So yep. here's what I recommend. Like a clock, like clockwork, I would like you to eat six little meals a day. Each one to be about half a cup to a cup of food. Six meals. that's all you can eat, right? Yep. Okay. And recommend, recommend, do not skip breakfast. Never skip breakfast. It's life and death for you getting better now. Forgive me for exaggerating. It's really important. Okay. Yep. All right. So 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 8 p.m. 8, 10, 12, 3, 6, 8. 6 and 8 p.m. Okay. Yep. All right. Then in addition, each one of those, we're thinking about half a cup to a cup because that's all you can eat anyways, right? Yep. Okay. Eat slowly. Don't have the TV on. Don't be talking. Don't make noise. Take one bite and then put down your fork because you're getting nauseated, right? Yes. Want to get better? Eat different. Okay. Okay. Yep. Now, what is the most valuable thing that we can do in the case? What we can do is we can spread wood shavings on the floor to mop up the acid and grow the new bacteria. Okay. Wood shavings are fiber. And we need to have a relatively bland food because you can barely eat anything. That would be right. What do you think might be a candidate for this bland food for you that's packed full of fiber? I feel like you're about to say oatmeal. That's my girl. Not just oatmeal, okay? Not just oatmeal because there's instant oatmeal. Is that what we want? No. There's plain oatmeal. Is that what we want? No. There's rolled oats. Possibly. No, no, no. no. What we want okay. is the difference between whole grain and a donut. Have you ever seen the actual oat, the plant? Have you seen them in the field or seen them in a picture or anything? What oats yeah. look like? Yes. Do they look at all like a donut? No. Have you seen wheat, the plant wheat? Yes. Does it look at all like a donut or a piece of cake? Mm, no. Because it's been processed. It's been bleached. It's been ground into microscopic particles, into dust, and made white flour. That okay. has no fiber. The fiber has been destroyed. We need the fiber to neutralize the acid and to feed the good bacteria. Okay. In other words, the gut bacteria in you now is competing for the space of the healthy bacteria. That's what small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is and blind loop syndrome and afferent loop syndrome. 
Okay. That's what you got, I think. And this is what we want to do to fix. Oh, we've only got 10 more minutes. Okay. All right. So we're almost done. Okay. Um, still cut oats. Still cut oats. And then for the rest of the day, have little bits of different, fresh, healthy fruits and vegetables. You took um, oatmeal, but how about a few blueberries in the oatmeal? That sounds good. Okay. How about a little Can bit of a strawberry? How about having a little tiny bit of oatmeal almost three or four times a day? I could be good with that. Okay. And there are other kinds of whole grains. There's whole wheat. There's other kinds of things. And also, can you imagine a half a cup of beans? What kind of beans? Any kind. Chickpeas, like black beans, pinto beans, kidney beans, all of them. They're relatively mild, right? They're not spicy. Okay. okay. That's exactly full of fiber. Okay. What do you need to grow your healthy bacteria? Fiber. Okay. So you see what I'm saying? You make a pot of beans, whatever you want. You don't have to put much, put much spice in there, right? Okay. And just have a half a cup or a quarter of a cup. Oh, so I could make like a bean salad. Well, salad means other foods that might not go as well. Just think of a cup, a, a quarter cup of beans, okay? Okay. Because you know what? That's just easy to eat. Okay. If you want to put a little bit of spice on it of some kind, that's okay. You could add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil or a little bit of vinegar, you know, balsamic vinegar, red wine okay. vinegar, apple cider vinegar, plain vinegar, or just a little bit of something. But you see, it's full of protein. It's full of what? Fiber. The right. fiber is what we need to grow healthy bacteria in your gut. Okay. And you don't have to eat much. Eat a spoonful. But you see, that's okay. easier to digest than the nuts. When you eat those nuts, a good portion of them are going to come out in your diarrhea. Right. Okay. We don't want that. We want yeah. some of that to rebuild your health because you're sick. Yes. Got it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now also, how about soup? No, not chicken noodle soup. And no, don't buy a can of soup. You can Google, you know what? You can make vegetable soup. You know what you do? You get vegetables, you boil water and add some spices. Okay. And if you want to get wild, you could put in a bean. Okay. Okay. But you're making that. Can you see that's healthy? Yes. Okay. You can see it's full of fiber. Yes. And guess what? Vegetables are full of phytochemicals, which just means chemicals from plants that are healthy and help grow a healthy gut. Okay. Okay. Yep. In addition, yep. you could have some dried fruit occasionally. So that's raisins, prunes, or dates, not sugared, but that's for a treat once in a while. Okay. Okay. You could have some peanuts and other nuts like that if you want. You should go very slow, eat them slowly, and um, not too much. Okay. Okay. Yep. In addition, potatoes are good. Okay. You can make a pot of 10 potatoes, boil them on Sunday night, and then put them in the refrigerator because that builds up what's called resistant starch. You can write okay. that down and look it up later. But then, it means the next day at 10 o'clock, you could cut out the half of a sweet potato, put a little extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of spices on it, not salt, and just to have a bite of that. Okay. Mild. Okay. Easy on your stomach. Okay. Good for building up your strength and a little bit of fiber and satiating Perfect. makes you feel full. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, there are some more things like that. We're down to about five minutes. Why don't we just say, uh, do you have any other questions? And then you need to see the gastroenterologist. You need to tell him you talked to the famous doctor. No, don't have to say it. I talked to Dr. <laughs> Rutledge. He thinks I have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. He may want to do a breath test and a colonoscope to get a stool sample to see if you have bacteria. One particular one is called Clostridia difficile or C. C. difficile. C D I F F I C I L E or C diff. That's good enough. Yep. I've already tested negative for that three times. 
Yeah, they're thinking that's good. Whoever tested you, they're thinking they're not thinking good enough, but yeah, they're worried about C. diff. They're right. They're right. It right. is something that's a problem. Okay. Okay. So my question with the oats is this, can you make them as like the, so are you mixing the steel cut with water or could you use unsweetened just water. almond? No. So just not unsweetened almond. almond milk. No, no. You, you Stop okay. saying that. No okay. unsweetened almond milk. Okay. So oats, water, and some berries. Just oats and water. Think about that. You're trying to live and you're in, you're on the edge of a cliff. Don't okay. start getting clever. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so you need to tell them you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. They were smart to check for C. diff, but C. diff is not the only bacteria out there. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So you've got other bacteria and they can, they probably don't know about this. Blind loop syndrome is an old syndrome and okay. they are young people. They're not old like I am. If they Google it, they'll learn about it. But this happens because your bypass limb has gotten an overgrowth of bacteria and they may want to use, uh, I use flagyl as a first step and uh, rif rifamaxin is another drug that's new and uh, they may want to try that as well. Okay. Okay. Stay in touch um, with me, but this is really important and I think potentially really serious. Okay. Um, it, well, I've been worried for a while. My question, my last question is this, what, am, what if any um, vitamins, minerals, like Metamucil, like am I- No, Metamucil is worthless. You can take a multivitamin. The way to get vitamins is to eat healthy food. Like okay. try and eat a slice of an orange for vitamin C as opposed to a pill. There's good research on that. I have some videos on it, but we're running out of time. But the answer I, is if you want to take a multivitamin, you can, but all those other things, look at your food, brightly colored food, that's chemicals. That's the best thing you can do for yourself. You can't okay. eat much of that, but you're doing with the watermelon a little bit better than other things. So think of if you're going to have oatmeal, have some other little bit of fruit or like a tomato. You know, we're talking about soup. How about like putting a bunch of tomatoes in your uh, vegetable soup? You're going to get lycopene and a bunch of other really good and really valuable chemicals better than a pill. So they've compared lycopene in a pill and lycopene in tomatoes. Tomatoes win out. They've compared okay. vitamin C in a pill and an orange. Oranges win out. Your chance now, uh, and you're on the edge of a cliff, is to eat healthy. You know, that's it. And you want to eat on target. Don't skip breakfast. And the one thing you want to drink is water or green tea and not anything else. Okay. And we're down to two minutes. So uh, any last questions? And then we're going to have to close up shop. Nope. I think we're good. Okay. Just you happy with amazing. our consultation? Absolutely. Give me an, give me an attaboy online. I'll give you an A plus. Okay. Thanks for putting up with me and my apologies for kind of pushing you to get through it, but okay. I think we did pretty well. Yeah, no, I, um, I'm hoping that I'll uh, start making these changes today and hopefully start seeing some changes in my nauseousness. Your nauseousness, yes, your nausea, right? Yeah. Okay, we're out, thank you. Amazing, thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.